Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching India as well with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Several media reports have suggested that India is preparing for any eventuality in the war-torn country of Afghanistan by being in regular touch with key political stakeholders there and with other nations, including key regional partners that uh, want stability in the region. Now, the Taliban, a hardline group, were ousted from power in Afghanistan by the U.S.-led campaign in 2001. The U.S. administration is in the process of reducing the number of its troops in the country and wants to enter into a peace accord with the Taliban. When this happens, India would want its political security interests in Afghanistan guarded, but at the same time, it's not in favor of any interim arrangement that lacks legitimacy reported the Economic Times. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump on Sunday indicated that he might leave a small number of troops and a strong presence of the U.S. intelligence system in the war torn country. In a fast-changing scenario, India needs to weigh out its options carefully. How does India proceed? That's what we will discuss on this edition of India's World. Joining me on the program today are Prabhu Dayal, former ambassador, Alok Bansal, director, India Foundation, and Harshvi Pant, Head, Strategic Studies, Observer Research Foundation. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of India's World. Ambassador, I'd like to begin uh, the program with you. How would you look at the rapidly changing, extremely fluid situation in Afghanistan? Well, frankly, I'm quite worried about the rapidly changing situation. India has exercised soft power in Afghanistan and has assisted that country in a huge manner. We have uh, pumped in billions of dollars and we are the largest donor country in the region. We have developed infrastructure projects. We have uh, created a lot of uh, uh, assistance related projects in education, healthcare, community assistance. So we have done a lot to improve the lot of the common man. Now with the impending withdrawal of the American forces or the reduction in number of American forces to a very substantial extent, the danger is that whatever we have tried to do might be undone by the forces that are antith antithetical to the ruling establishment in Afghanistan. As you are aware, the Taliban has been consistent in its position that the government in Kabul is illegitimate and it wants its ouster. Now, last week, the Americans and the Taliban are understood to have reached an agreement on the withdrawal of the US forces. And of course, the Taliban in return have promised that they would not let Al-Qaeda and ISIS carry out attacks from Afghan territory. But the Taliban itself is a terrorist organization and has been engaging in terrorist activities in the name of Islam. And what is worse is that it is to a very large extent controlled by the ISI mm. or by the Pakistan army. So the likelihood of the Taliban increasing its attacks on Indian interests in the emerging scenario is very much a reality as it is. If you recall, in 2008, the Indian embassy was bombed. Again, in 2009, it was bombed. And there were several casualties, besides a very large number of injuries. In 2017, the Indian consulate in Jalalabad was attacked. There was a bomb blast. Many people died. Right. And last year, in uh, May, I think, or June, last summer, there were nine Indian engineers who were abducted mm. uh, in Afghanistan by the Taliban. And the ISI exerted utmost pressure to ensure that they were not released. So the Taliban, as it is, has been carrying out attacks on Indian interests, as also, of course, on the interests of the Afghan government in Kabul. And the possibility that in case the American forces withdraw, which they are going to, mm. the possibility that our interests in Afghanistan would be endangered is very real. Right. And we have to weigh our options. We have a certain presence in Afghanistan. We have a large number of technicians. We have a large number of engineers mm. and others who are based there to look after the projects that we are carrying out. We have to make sure that their security is not endangered. 
there have been abductions and there could be many more abductions. Sure. So we have to look at all possibilities. Of course, we have emphasized that the peace process in Afghanistan should be Afghan owned and Afghan right. led. Right. But with a neighbor like Pakistan, which is very, very interested in overturning the balance of power in mm -hmm. Afghanistan, our interests would also stand to suffer. And we have to engage in a dialogue with all interested parties to sure. make sure that this doesn't happen. Sure. We'll talk about what options India has a little while later. But before that, uh, Professor Pant, you know, as far as uh, Afghanistan is concerned, you know, why is Afghanistan important to India? Well, Afghanistan, of course, as the ambassador said, uh, is important for a number of reasons. As the ambassador said, we have, at least since the fall of the Taliban, India has been formidably engaged with Afghanistan in building a new Afghanistan, in building a war-ravaged Afghanistan from the ruins, and in building capacities of, uh, of Afghanistan to become a modern nation state. And that is a process that I think India has been a very important and steadfast partner to the ordinary Afghans, and, if, and I think that is reflected in the way um, if you any poll would tell you that India is, is it remains the most important, uh, most popular country uh, for for ordinary Afghans. So I think in that sense, uh, India's relationship with Afghanistan uh, owes back to the history, uh, to to our geography, of course, uh, its being a neighbour, uh, but also to this larger uh, trend in Indian India's recent foreign policy, where India looks at some of its regional commitments very seriously, and so uh, Afghanistan post Taliban has been seen by Indian policymakers that is, as an important commitment as to how we want to see our neighbors uh, grow and how, how can we have a stake in their prosperity and I think that's the engagement that India has had with Afghanistan. There is of course the strategic rationale for, for engaging with Afghanistan. The fact that Pakistan sees Afghanistan as its strategic periphery means that India's role had been visualized as very limited and India has tried to engage with Afghanistan to make sure that does, that does not happen, that the repeat of the, of the past does not happen. Afghanistan also becomes very critical if you look at India's engagement with the larger Central Asian region. So when we look at our engagements in the, in the Central Asian uh, geography, uh, Afghanistan becomes a very important nodal point for us. The larger connectivity projects that we are trying to envision in the region uh, have, a, have Chabahar uh, you know, as, as one of the projects where we are trying to link Afghanistan to the larger, uh, you know, if you can call it a modern global economy. So in that sense, our engagement with Afghanistan spans across sectors, it spans mm. across geographies, it, is, it also spans across various ethnicities. We are not wedded to one particular uh, ethnicity in the country, as some countries are, um, uh, in, in the region and beyond. And we have engaged with all stakeholders in the past as well. So when you look at uh, why Afghanistan is now so critically important, uh, and especially in the context in which we are discussing America's, America trying to rethink about its own role and leave Afghanistan uh, without any fallback option, that means that a lot of what uh, ailed Afghanistan in the past, it's uh, 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 Pakistan trying to dominate its polity, Pakistan, to, Pakistan trying to make sure that Afghanistan adheres to a particular uh, political trend and, uh, and hews a certain line in its foreign policy, that has been problematic. And of course, it led to pa Afghanistan becoming uh, a base for all kinds of extremist and violent radical ideologies. Right. Emanating from Afghanistan, they have shaped the contours of South Asia and beyond for a long time. And that mm. was the reason why uh, America was hit and America came back. So I think for a, for a lot of these reasons, for us, it's very important that Afghanistan prospers. Afghanistan becomes a modern nation state. Afghanistan remains an independent, strategically autonomous power in the region that can make decisions based on what it feels are its own interests rather than other countries trying to dominate it and dictate terms to it. All right. Uh Captain Batsa, now that we've understood, you know, what the problem really is in Afghanistan and what Afghanistan means to India, what are our options really in Afghanistan? Yeah, as far as India is concerned, firstly, we must understand that as far as an Afghan is concerned, India is one of the most preferred nations. As I said, India's popularity rating in Afghanistan is extremely high. Now, having said that, see, one of the biggest problems of this U.S. talks to Af with Taliban is that it has undermined the administration of uh, President Ashraf Ghani. Because in a tribal society, uh, ordinary citizen perceives the level of the people who are negotiating at par. So what has happened is that because US has started negotiating with Taliban, Taliban stature has risen. Now the second thing is we don't know who in Taliban is actually negotiating. Because Mullah Baradar was in prison as far as, uh, in, uh, as far as Pakistan's prisons were concerned for a number of years. Now all of a sudden some order comes that he has been made head of the Qatar office and he is negotiating. So what are Mullah Biradar's credentials? 
Third thing is when people say that uh, US will withdraw but Taliban, uh, Al-Qaeda and IS will not be allowed to operate out of Afghanistan. Uh, what is the guarantee? Because please understand, Al-Qaeda wants to wage a jihad under Amirul Muminin, who is Mullah Akhundzada. Uh, Al-Qaeda has never said that we want to wage a jihad under Ayman al-Jawahiri. Their jihad is premised on the leadership of Mullah Akhundzada. So unless, of course, Akhundzada himself comes out and says that, yes, I am not going to be uh, the Amirul Muminin, I think any assurance that ISI-backed leaders give have got no meaning. The final thing which we must understand is that whether American troops are there or not, the ANA is no pushover. It can't be run over tomorrow. Please understand in Afghanistan, people have come to power not by winning wars, but by winning over the fence sitters. Because very often what has happened in Afghanistan is the fence sitters have crossed over to the side which they perceive to be winning. So why American presence was essential was because it gave a sort of a feeling of permanence to the state government. So the fence sitters remained with the government. Now this latest announcement by President Trump where he said, yes, they would keep a token presence, would ensure the legitimacy of the government and would ensure that the government stays. And as long as government stays, please understand 60% of the Afghan population does not like Taliban. That's been uh, proved by various polls that have taken place. We are invested in uh, Afghanistan and we should remain invested. And we are training the Afghan National Army. Our engagement with the Afghan National Army needs to be enhanced. Probably we need to set up more training facilities if required. But please understand, Afghanistan cannot be abandoned. A lot of people are saying that India should also start talking to Taliban. I fail to understand what are we going to gain. And when I say talk to Taliban, I mean talk as we call it the diplomatic parlance. Maintaining contact is essential. By anybody you are fighting with, anybody who is your neighbor, you have to maintain contact. But negotiating, the talks by meaning negotiations with Taliban doesn't serve any purpose. Because already so many countries have talked to Taliban. Mm. As far as Taliban is concerned, you are only one of the hey, who have come, Johnny comes lately type of people who have just followed US, Russia and all other countries. It's not going to win you great goodwill. But by talking to Taliban, you will actually disappoint your friends in Afghanistan. So to my mind, it doesn't really serve any purpose. What we need to do is we need to strengthen Ashraf Ghani's government. We need to strengthen the democratic government in Afghanistan. Ensure that they have the wherewithal to counter these obscurantist mullahs who are actually leading uh, Taliban. Right. And please understand, final point mm. is that... Taliban, irrespective of what they negotiate with US, their aims and objectives are not going to be insular. They are not going to remain confined to Afghanistan. They propagate an ideology which by nature is global, hmm. is not going to remain confined to Afghanistan. So if Afghanistan gets Talibanized, the region will be influenced by it. That radical ideology that will emanate from there will try and engulf the countries in its vicinity. Sure, talking about the region, Ambassador, who are the other stakeholders and also uh, who would be willing to work with India going forward? Well, first of all, let me just address very briefly this question raised by Captain Bansal on the issue of talking to the Taliban. Well, we are not going to be talking to the Taliban directly as the Americans are doing. Mm. But it is, from my point of view, essential that we also have a seat at the table which decides the future of Afghanistan. We are a supporter of the government in Afghanistan and it is important for that government to have as many of its friends also present at the table where its own future is decided. So, to put it briefly, we must be an active participant and have a rightful place in the negotiations relating to the future of Afghanistan. That's a diplomatic, so now, who, di diplomat's perspective. No, that's a strategically important perspective. <laughs> right. Who are the other stakeholders? Certainly, Iran is an important stakeholder. 25% uh, or even more of the Afghan population is Shiite. And Iran wields considerable influence in the, in the provinces which border it, as also in the northern provinces. Russia, for obvious reasons, is an important player. And so is China. So the Americans have unilaterally been deciding on, on issues which relate to uh, matters which, really speaking, belong to a larger decision-making family. And very frankly, Mr. Pre uh, the Mr. Trump is, uh, has shown no great 
नॉलेज ऑफ अफगानिस्तान वाइल हिज डिसीशन सीम टू बी द वन दट आर शेपिंग थिंग्स he famously said that all that india has done is make a library there which shows his vast ignorance of the subject india has made dams has made in, has made highways has set up telecommunication projects india has pumped in more than 3 billion dollars of assistance to strengthen afghanistan in a variety of ways so we should make sure that other stakeholders including ourselves are net, not left out because leaving us out is precisely what pakistan wants right pakistan's agent is the taliban mm. the taliban has been nurtured by pakistan pakistan has used the taliban to hurt india's interests for instance the abduction of uh, nine indian engineers by the taliban was certainly encouraged by the pakistanis who in any case made sure that the taliban was in no rush or no hurry to release these sure. engineers right the taliban have time and again claimed responsibility for attacks on indian interests both the attacks on the uh, indian embassy in kabul were attributed to the taliban around the uh, middle of january in fact on 14th january there was a bomb blast near kabul airport in the highly fortified green area green village mm, mm. and that was carried out by the taliban so the taliban's intentions or its behavior have not changed right it remains hostile to the uh, government in kabul it remains hostile to us and therefore in any set of negotiations that are taking place we should make sure that the future of afghanistan is not shaped by forces which are either indifferent to it like the americans now seem to be behaving or by forces which are hostile to kabul like sure. the pakistanis but well wishers of the government are also present in those discussions Absolutely. and have a significant say sure uh, you know uh, professor the ambassador raised the point about how china is a stakeholder in the region and probably we can work with china so is that an option really where india and china come together in afghanistan putting aside all other differences really and work for stability in the region i think the trump administration has left us with very few options in that regard i think uh, we have to have an understanding with the chinese and i think if you recall one of the first things in the, the wuhan summit uh, one of the most significant announcements was was about india and china working together in afghanistan so i think uh, there has been some sense in the indian policy making circles because this is an uh, this is a problem that uh, this is uh, something that has been gathering momentum for the last few months and indian policy makers have been subtly trying to reevaluate what they've been you know their engagements with countries like russia uh, china on this issue so i think uh, with 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 china there is a lot of potential to be exploited it remains to be seen how it gets operationalized and whether uh, the kind of hopes that we have that eventually china will be able to put pressure on pakistan not to mar the prospects of such such a sino indian cooperation that remains to be seen but i think that's a very uh, valid and important uh move going forward as as we talk about the flux and as we talk of the changing uh security dynamic in the region uh, i think you know the point uh, a, a larger point here is uh, and something that alok touched upon is ultimately a lot of this will depend on how strongly india stands up for its own interests because at the end of the day afghanistan is a hard power country you know while we we like to think that our television serials are very popular and they give us a soft power stay at the end of the day those who are willing to stand up and fight they get counted and i think this this idea uh, that we have is somehow our soft power in and of itself will make us very well uh, invaluable in to, to the process that has not borne out and that has been going on for quite some time now so i think that the aspect that alok talked about in terms of strengthening ana is perhaps the most important aspect of our engagement or should be one of the most important aspects of our engagement because if afghanistan is to emerge as, as an strategically autonomous actor it needs to have security forces that are able to Uh, you know take on the onslaught from the op- 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 opponents and which taliban is going to come out with very now that they know that uh, that uh, americans are going to go they will not uh, relent so just training the afghan army is not enough is what you're suggesting no i think that is that is very important that has to be taken on a much more broader footing mm. because mm. i think see on on other issues there is no consensus in this country let's be honest about it if you say tomorrow that india should be fighting in afghanistan that's not going to happen because that's that's i think i don't think that's uh, that's at the at the moment being discuss or there is any political uh, consensus so i think what we can do to ensure the second uh, line of operation would be that we have to build the capacity and war fighting capacity of the afghan state 
because that's where it would matter. Ultimately, right. they will they will have to fight it out on the, on the battlefield as they've been doing for quite some time. Mm. It mm. was American presence that was sustaining that uh, on the on the ANA front. Now it remains to be seen who comes and sustains that engagement. Sure. Talking about China, Captain Bansal, you know, uh, on the one hand, you have Pakistan in the midst of all of this. China's very good old friend, of course. And then you have this other issue where China keeps scuttling India's entry into the NSG. Even the most, most recently, they've said that India should be part of the non-proliferation treaty. Only then will it be allowed to be a part of the NSG. So how far can you really take China's word for it in Afghanistan? See, nations have different views on different issues and their interests are, as far as NSG is concerned, China's interests are there that India should not get into it because China doesn't want India to come into it. So it's been blocking it. But as far as Afghanistan is concerned, there is some amount of congruence of interest. Please understand, the radicalization in Afghanistan and for that matter in Pakistan affects China directly. Uh, the communist state is extremely paranoid of religion-based radicalization or religion-based terrorism. In fact, their reactions to various religions, cults, etc. in China has been extremely knee-jerk. You could see it in Xinjiang, you could see a fallen gong, you could even see against the Catholic Church recently or those sort. Because an atheist society, so-called officially atheist society, does not understand what drives people driven by religion. And as a result, they are extremely paranoid. And this is one issue which they realized that if Taliban becomes a component of Afghan government in Afghanistan, it will eventually overtake Afghanistan. And uh, it often happens. You can go back into history and see that when you have a component of the government which has regimented forces outside, will eventually prevail. It happened in Czechoslovakia post Second World War. It would happen now in this sort of a scenario. And if Afghanistan comes under the sway of uh, Taliban, it will, as I said, the ideology that it propagates will permeate across borders. And one of the targets is bound to be Xinjiang region where Uyghurs have been persecuted by Chinese authorities. There is a massive re-education program, etc. going. So there is some amount of congruence. Second thing is both China and India want to uh, use the resources in Afghanistan and we are actually committed to economic engagement with Afghanistan. Mm. And uh, please understand one of the biggest problems with Afghanistan is that Afghan National Army is competent, but Afghan's revenues are not sufficient to sustain that sort of a force. So you need to provide them revenues. As of now, the international community is paying for it. But ideal situation would be where Afghanistan has certain model of revenue generation by which it is able to keep that sort of force. Now, Afghanistan has some natural resources. Some people say it's got some rare earth metals and things like that. Now, the problem has been if these minerals are exploited, how do they travel? Because for India, which has been the traditional market for Afghanistan, if you look, go back into history, Afghanistan was a rentier state which actually thrived on the trade which passed through Afghanistan to India. Now, Pakistan has blocked that access. Now, if Afghanistan's resources have to be exploited by India. The only option till now has been Iran. But with President Trump and his uh, belligerent stance towards Iran, that option also doesn't look very viable in long term. Mm. So maybe uh, exploiting Afghanistan's resources or accessing Afghanistan and Central Asia through China could possibly be a viable option. So right. there seems to be a congruence. So we need to look at it. I'm not trying to say that you bank totally. Countries have to be cautious. China, uh, what are Chinese postures, but government has made a stance that if US wants to unilaterally take decisions and uh, uh, as ambassador said, that President Trump's this get up from the bad and tweet uh, sort of foreign policy, uh, you can never be sure today he is doing something, tomorrow he might do something else, day after he might like to do sure. something else. So in those sort of a scenario, you would want to have an ally which is far more dependable. Right. than somebody who changes his stance by the day. So I think there is no harm in collaborating. We are already collaborating with Iran. We need to also revive our close linkages with Russia and Central Asian states as far as Afghanistan is concerned. Right. And then create an alliance which must be committed to ensuring the Taliban don't come sure. to power in Kabul. All right, quick closing comments from all my guests now. I'm going to ask you to be brief because I've got very limited time. Starting with you, First Ambassador, with the best way forward. The biggest problem for us, I repeat, is going to be Pakistan. Mm. Because Pakistani stranglehold on the Taliban continues and becomes stronger by the day. And through the Taliban, 
Pakistan is able to act against our interests in Afghanistan. Right. With the um, evacuation of American forces, the withdrawal of American forces, the Pakistani control over Taliban will become stronger. stronger. And through it, it will be able to endanger us more than it did in the past. So we will have to take stock of the situation and see how do we uh, nullify Pakistani activities in Afghanistan. As uh, Captain Bansal says, we can't be really going into Afghanistan. But we have to look at the possibility whether the UN could send forces in mm. Afghanistan mm. Mm. because the American withdrawal does raise very serious security questions, questions. for that country. Absolutely. Professor Pant? Well, I think we need to be talking to uh, various stakeholders, as, as has been pointed out, and perhaps uh, finding out alternative mechanisms, whether it be it with, with the Chinese or with the Russians or with the Iranians, uh, and with the Central Asians, which I think have a stake in how uh, uh, Taliban evolves. Uh, but uh, sorry, Afghanistan evolves and Taliban gets uh, sort of not as significant a role in the, in the political process as perhaps they are trying mm. to uh, get. But also important would be how do you sustain, uh, you know, to make a case that sustainability of the legitimacy of the uh, Ashraf Ghani government is very important because it represents the evolution in Afghan uh, right. polity, which needs to be sustained. And therefore, you have to build its capacity to a point where it can sustain itself. And sure. I think that's where India can play a very uh, greater role perhaps than it has played so far. Captain Balsam, close the show for us with your concluding remarks. I just want to say that it is in India's deep interest that the current dispensation in Afghanistan survives because we have to decide whether we want to f fight Taliban in Kabul or we would like to fight them in Vaga or Srinagar. All right. On that note, then, we'll call it a wrap on this edition of India as well. But we'd like to hear from you as well. Do share your feedback and your suggestions with us. Our email ID is indiasworld.feedback at gmail.com. You can also tweet to us using our Twitter handles at FRP09 and at Rajasabha TV. I'd like to thank my guests as well. Thank you, all of you, for being with me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.